So the specific aims of this study were, were quite ordinary. Uh, we had to recruit volunteers, uh, we had to give the drug, we had to measure effects, and we had to uh, be able to determine the levels of DMT in blood resulting from our injections. Um, so one of the major questions was the nature of our volunteers. Um, it had been <clears throat> 20 or 25 years since anybody had uh, you know, given any psychedelic to anybody in the U.S. Uh, and uh, I knew people were going to be worried about adverse effects. Um, were people going to go crazy? Were they going to have flashbacks? Um, were they going to begin using psychedelics and blame us? So, um, you know, after a lot of consultation back and forth and all around, uh, we decided to use only experienced psychedelic users. Um, and although from a purely scientific point of view, that may not have been ideal. It wasn't a naive group of volunteers. Uh, it was prudent. Uh, it was prudent and it was reasonable, both, I think. Um, it, it was prudent because um, we believed experienced folks would be able to handle the effects of DMT if you brought in a totally naive person, never done a psychedelic in their lives, and gave them a full dose of DMT. Uh, I mean, who knows what would happen, um, and who knows what they would have thought about it and how they would have reacted to it. Um, so we figured experienced folks, even if they hadn't smoked freebase DMT, which is how it's used most likely, most commonly on the street, in the, in the field. Um, yeah, well, uh, um, so even if p people hadn't had their own previous DMT experience, just their familiarity with the psychedelic space in the first place would have uh, we felt was uh, a very important kind of safeguard to have in place. Um, people knew more or less what to expect. Um, so that was one of the reasons we chose experienced users. Um, and we also thought uh, that they just uh, would be able to report more carefully about the experience. Um, somebody who's never done DMT before, any psychedelic before, oftentimes their first response is, oh, wow. And we wanted a more sophisticated report from folks than just uh, sort of a blanket uh, exclamation of astonishment and amazement. Um, and we figured that experienced folks would be able to articulate more clearly some of the nuances involved um, of DMT. Had everybody, had everybody done DMT, or were there you know, just LSD and psilocybin um, experiences, or had everyone done DMT prior to the study? Do you remember? Yeah, I think of the 60 people that we um, ended up studying, I think two or three had used DMT before. Yeah, um, so, uh, well, I was recruiting people in, the, in uh, the late 80s, early 90s, so not many people had heard of Terrence McKenna at the time, um, and th th there just wasn't much of a currency in DMT. People weren't thinking about it or t talking about it, so it was still a, you know, a fairly obscure psychedelic compound. Yeah, um, so the, well, yeah, um, so people mostly had experience um, with LSD and um, some of them with um, psilocybin containing mushrooms. Yeah, and uh, some people had taken LSD once, some people had taken LSD four or five hundred times, uh, you know, so it was a pretty widespread of the amount of experience. Yeah, and, um, you know, it, and, all because people had taken psychedelics in uh, um, in, uh, in uh, the past wasn't a simple guarantee of them getting involved in, in the study. I, I interviewed everybody in a preliminary sort of way before I brought them into the study, and I wanted to know that they could handle their psychedelic experiences. I didn't want them, um, you know, panicking or doing anything untoward. Uh, there was one guy I remember who, uh, you know, I asked him how far out he had been ever on psychedelic drugs, and he said, oh, every time I really get high, I find myself naked on the roof of my house. So I thought to myself, well, this guy's not going to be a particularly, you know, helpful volunteer if he rips off his clothes and runs down the hall. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, other people had taken psychedelics, but they really hadn't had much of an effect. 
And uh, I knew it, the DMT effect was going to be large, you know, as large or larger than anything they'd had before. So um, I remember one one man came in and I asked him how high he'd gotten on psychedelics. And uh, he said, well, with my eyes closed, I saw some squiggly lines. Um, so on that person didn't seem like he would be appropriate either. And uh, I was in a funny position because I said to him, uh, you know, I can't encourage you to take drugs, but if you do and you have a more intense full-blown experience, why don't you get back, you know, uh, so why don't you call me back and see if we can involve you in the study. Um, yeah, and I wanted to make certain that people were psychologically healthy too. Uh, most psychedelic users are healthy, normal people. In fact, as you know, uh, has been you know objectively sort of demonstrated from the UDV studies that they've done. People who use psychedelics in some ways are healthier than those um, who, or you know, a control population, as it were. Um, so I think people who have use psychedelics and have negotiated the, the straits that they can place one into, um, they're just more psychologically nimble and sophisticated, I think, can handle uh, unusual experiences m more than the usual person. Can you talk about that 